What's going on, everybody? We're back. It's your friend, Will. This is the Memory Lapse. And uh, I only intended to post one Singleton video, but we kind of gave up on this run. Well, give up is not the right word, but we did not conclude this run yesterday before we stopped playing. And I only have seven hours. This is going to expire while I'm at work. So we're picking it up this morning. This is a green-black, more streamlined version of the Muldrotha build. <clears throat> I decided just to cut the blue to get the... Enter the battlefield tap lands out of the deck, and uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get up to even on this one at least, and then it's going to be back to regular standard. There's a lot of uh, results to look at from over the weekend: the SCG Invitational, um, Gerard Fabiano top aided, playing in modern he played Jund, and in standard he played a uh, time walk version of Just Guy Control. So. <clears throat> we haven't tried any of those lists since the rotation with Nexus of Fate. Then there's also some green-white tokens and green-black builds. So in the spirit of uh, finishing strong for the year, we should definitely go check those out and try to win some matches. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> that Knight of Grace is going to be problematic. I guess our best bet is to race it. But nothing here so far answers it. Hmm. Hmm. You don't have to worry about this yet. I'm surprised they didn't attack. And it looks like they're either... <clears throat> Alright, yep. Yeah. This Knight of Grace is going to be really tough to attack through. That's a nice top deck for us. Well, if they get to 5... Well, I guess they're 6... We don't have to pull the trigger on this Assassin's Trophy for a minute still. And we can probably just set up a Tetsamok to destroy this, so... Their, their draw started off scary, but they've developed pretty slowly. And this Underrealm Lich is going to give us the selection we need, hopefully, to push through this game. Ooh, that's awkward. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Do we take Doom Whisper here? Yeah, seems like the best one. Even start getting in. <clears throat> I'm guessing they'll just do... No blocks here. Oh. Other mode. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, I guess we want Memorial, right, as some backup.
left ourselves in a bit of a weird position here <clears throat> by not assassin's trophying the july and but yeah i mean i guess if they rip land and attack we still have a block here so they need to have remo removal for this which means they can't pump the angel so i think we're in an okay spot it's a, it's a big investment the six mana sink and if we block and they gain the life that they the angel has to be alive for it to trigger all right so i think we win from here if we trophy this flyer and swing with the team right Six, six. Could they have settled the wreckage? Hmm. That would be kind of weird, right? But considering the way they played, it's certainly possible. We just attack like this then. In the life. Yeah, settle the wreckage. Okay. Uh, take action. So we do want to gain the life. All right. Well, that's a bit of a setback, but we have an active arch. And we still have a six ticks flyer. It's going to take care of business. Don't expect they'll have a follow up because they have not been adding to the board. Oh. Relentless Raptors. Which they're choosing to increase in size rather than. Oh, it. Yeah, that's not how it works. All right, let's draw. And then we'll sit at the top of our deck. Vine Mare's decent. It's just something else in play. Fire for six is fine. I think we're just going to get it back then with Memorial. It says Vigilance. Fortunately, we don't get to draw with Arch because it's cost too much mana. One, two, three, four, five. We can still draw with Arch so we don't have to hold the swamp. Hmm. I think that they didn't play aggressively enough with their uh, Knight of Grace. Because I mean, we probably would have stabilized either way, but they could have chipped in we'd be at a lower life total although i guess we would have gotten a chip back i don't know it's, it's close but it feels like that this was a really good to turn to play from them against our deck and they did not really do much with it other than sit back on defense i guess we'll get rid of that And 
And I guess we're going to want to use the Doom Whisperer and try to find two good draws here. Vraska and Isra. Vraska takes care of the Healer's Hawk. Isra doesn't do much. We kind of need like a running removal spell, so yeah, this does it. So we draw the Vraska this way. Untap. Chupacabra the dragon. Golgari queen. Healer's hawk. And get him for six. Alright, I'm going to go take off my jacket and uh, refill my coffee. So I'll be right back and then we'll jump into the next game. All right, we are back. Claim our prize. Up to three wins. Let's go into the next round. <clears throat> this is nice. It's just a lot of the card advantage stuff that is usually pretty good in these matchups. Journey to Eternity has been quite good in this format. It actually makes me want to investigate it like in standard, but I don't know. It does seem like it would be very good in the mirrors. All right, so let's just get our three drop or our three two into play. Since they love a double forest, it doesn't seem likely the undergrowth ability is going to come into play here. Now this gives us the option to like enchant it next turn and attack. Or enchant it and leave it back to block. They're leaving trophy. Hmm. <laughs> so maybe here. We just attack and play Isareth. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't really want to play the Blood Fast until I have the available mana to activate it. And it might be interesting to see if they'll use the Assassin's Trophy here to accelerate us. This is like a. This is a medium-ish threat to the long game. Okay, so they have like a bit of a more budget build here. I guess the question is if we trade Isareth for these two, are we up upset? I don't think we are. I think that's the most likely thing. No? Okay, cool. Uh, that means that Isareth actually has a target next turn. So we can play the Blood Fest here. And we'll get to at least draw a card off it, and then we'll get a land if they decide to trophy it.
and them having to decide when they're choked on black. Oh, okay, so they're going to get some black here. Maybe they'll get black green to leave up trophy. We kind of have to decide between these two. Yeah, go ahead. All right, give us a card. That's a nice one, actually. Can't just send down the journey while they have this assassin's trophy available. They're more likely to be able to recur creatures. It pays for a draw, which is nice. All right, take a card. They're ahead on mana, but we're gonna catch up. All right, and now that means we can um, play our journey. I think relatively safely. Arch is a good draw. If if we're gonna draw a land, that's a good one. Elves are born to good draw too. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. At three, with them at 14, there's no difference between five and four, or four and three, I think. No, actually, there's a little bit of a difference. All right. That's a really nice top deck from them, but we have an equally nice one here with Brass's Contempt. They discard their Galta. Thank you, Eldest Reborn. Just remove this. <clears throat> They can survey a bunch. We can remove the best thing out of their graveyard. And should have this pretty well handled. I mean, we can just get this Galta back. So we'll actually just remove a spell most likely here. I mean, maybe it's just not even, doesn't even matter. I think we should just get rid of the Galta. I just feel like the only way they get back in this game is if they have a way to reanimate it or recur it next turn. All right, and we have the mana, so let's put this on. Right there. All right, thank you very much for flipping my journey. This comes back. I guess we'll get E. Seraph. Yeah, the Death Touch is better. All right, Tender Shoot Dry will get out of control pretty quick. <clears throat> now they basically need to find Fine Finality pretty quickly. And even if they do, we have. Uh, Cave of Eternity to bring all this stuff back over time. Like, we're just going to be able to recur Tender Shoot Dryad over and over again. Wow. 
That was really close. Unreal. That was a good draw. Though, again, I think it just accelerates us. Winning a turn, I think we were probably fine. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, I'm going to decline because I don't want to. I'm going to bring back the drive, but I want to bring it back using this so it doesn't get the Isareth token. I don't want uh because I want to be able to continue to recur it. Yeah, I underrated cards like Tennis Dryad. Uh it just it does seem like the format has moved to be like sixty ish percent green black decks. And it's really important to have the cards like that that can just take over the game and and you have leverage against the fact that everyone's only running one Chupacabra, one for Assets Contempt, you know, one cast down. And if you can keep track of that stuff, you're in a good spot. All right, so that was 21 minutes, two games, uh, with a little bit of a, a pause in the middle, but we're going to be right back uh, finishing off this run, or hopefully coming close to it in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. This deck is pretty fun to play. It's, it's a nice departure from regular green-black, and uh, we'll be back soon with what might be the conclusion.